Income tax 2023-2024. Credits for qualifying children and other dependents. Specific instructions. Get ready and some coffee so we can lessen the sting from the IRS smack with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information can be found in the Schedule 8812 Instructions Credit for Qualifying Children and Other Dependents Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're on the second part on the credit line items, remembering the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here we have income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income, taxable income therefore being basically the bottom line of the income statement part of the income tax formula, but it's only half the battle. We still have the second half of the income tax formula we're focused in on here. Once we have that taxable income, we have to apply the tax multiplying by, you would think, a rate, but no, it's more complex than that because we have the progressive tax system and we have some types of income which are at other tax rates other than ordinary income, such as, for example, possibly long-term capital gains, qualified dividends. Once we calculate the tax before credit and other taxes, then we have to deal with the credits, which is our point of focus now, and other taxes and the payments. Note that we have two line items for the credits. We have the credits up top in the same category as basically other taxes, and then credits down here, which is in the same category as payments. Why? Because other taxes include things like the uh, self-employment tax here, and they are going to, of course, increase the tax liability, and then the credits would decrease the tax liability, but not in the same format as a deduction, noting if we had a dollar deduction, it would be decreasing the taxable income, only giving us a benefit based on the tax rate, whereas if we had a dollar credit, it would be reducing the tax liability for that entire dollar amount, which is why it's down here in the formula. Once we apply the credits and other taxes, we get to the tax, uh, the total tax, then Normally, we would compare that to the tax actually paid, usually with W-2 withholdings or estimated payments to get to the refund or amount due. However, we also have the credits down here in the payment area as well. Why? Because some of these credits might be non-refundable up top versus the refundable portion down below, which not only reduces our tax liability by a dollar, but could potentially take the, the total tax below zero, making it not a credit so much as like a welfare or benefit type of program, as opposed to simply a tax credit. And when we're looking at the credit here for the child tax credit and additional child tax credits, we have part of it that's going to be this refundable or non-refundable up top and part of the credit being refundable. We always want to basically keep that in mind, thinking of the terminology of the child tax credit being that it is a credit as opposed to a deduction, meaning we get a dollar for dollar benefit as opposed to reducing the taxable income, which would only give us a benefit based on the tax rate. And there's a refundable or non-refundable portion to it. More specifically, we can use terminology such as 
the child tax credit, the CTC, as opposed to the ACTC, which is the additional child tax credit, breaking out the non-refundable and refundable portions. All right, keeping that in mind, here's the second page of the Form 1040, child tax credit for the non-refundable part, line 19, in the category for tax and credits, child tax credit or credit for other dependents, see Schedule 8812. Then in the payments section, which would include the refundable portion, possibly the additional child tax credit portion, the ACTC, line 28, additional child tax credit from Schedule 8812. This is Schedule 8812, where we have credits for, for qualifying children and other dependents. So we're going to go through some of the line instructions here. Remember, the general idea with the credit is it's tied to whether they qualify as for as a dependent. So when you think about whether someone qualifies for a dependent, you have the questions of, are they a qualifying child? If they are a qualifying child, do they qualify for the child tax credit? If they don't qualify for the child tax credit, do they qualify for the other dependent credit? If they're not a qualifying child, do they qualify as a dependent to take the other dependent credit? So here we have the credits for qualifying children and other dependents, the two types of credits tied to a dependent. Part one deals with the child tax credit and credit for other dependents, the CTC, basically the non-refundable portion generally. Part number two, uh, A, the additional child tax credit for all filers. Typically, you can kind of think of this as being more tied to the additional child tax credit or the refundable portion that might be able to take the tax liability below zero, resulting in a, quote, refund, end quote, even though no tax is being paid by that point. And then part 2B, certain filers who have three or more qualifying children and bona fide residents of Puerto Rico. And C, additional child tax credit. Okay, so let's take a look at the line by line. Specific instructions, part number one, child tax credit and credit for other dependents, all filers, line four, add the number of boxes checked under child tax credit in column four of the dependents section on form 1040, 1040, SR 1040, NR. So in other words, usually we're using tax software. As we do the tax software, we enter the dependents into the system. If they qualify for, as a qualifying child, and they qualify for the child tax credit, then on the first page of the form 1040 under the dependents, we will have the dependent, the social security number, and usually there's two check boxes. One or the other are typically checked, either the child tax credit that they qualify for or the other dependent. So we're gonna be adding up those dependents that are on page one uh, for our calculations here. So caution. So you can't check both the child tax credit box and the credit for other dependents box for the same person. In other words, you can't take both the child tax credit and the other dependent credit for one social security number. That's why in the dependent instructions, we see whether or not they first qualify for the more beneficial child tax credit. And if not, only then can we still get the other default credit, the other dependent credit. Line six add the number of boxes checked under quote credit for other dependents end quote in column four of the dependents section on form 1040 1040 sr or form 1040 nr so in other words on the first page of the form 1040 we have one of the two boxes checked child tax credit or other dependents for each of the dependents now we're looking at the line for the other dependent checkbox people. So line 13, enter the amount from credit limit worksheet A. So we're gonna have limitations basically on the credit to go through our worksheet. Remember the kind of limitations that we are going to be having uh, are going to include for the non-refundable portion, we're gonna have a problem if we li tax liability goes below zero. And we could also have a high income threshold where the credit could phase out on the high income side uh, type of thing. And then we have to think about the additional uh, child credit calculations if the income uh, is going below zero. So when completing credit limit worksheet A, you may be instructed to complete credit limit worksheet B if you meet certain conditions. Obviously, tax software can help out with these calculations. We'll do a tax software example in future presentations, but you wanna have a general idea of what the schedules are doing and why, so you can explain it to people. 
double check that the data input is done properly and plan for tax planning in the future. So complete credit limit worksheet B only if you meet all the following, uh, you are uh, claiming one or more of the following credits. You've got the mortgage interest credit form 8396, adoption credit form 8839, residential clean energy credit form uh, 5695 part one, distribution uh, of Columbia first time home buyer credit form 8859. So when we look at basically like credit limitations, then some things could could mess up our basically our calculations for things like AGI limits and, and that kind of thing. So usually those possibly will not be taking place, but they can add more complications if they do. Tax software will help in those cases typically. You are not filing form 2555, 2555, which deals with uh, typically foreign uh, income tax situation. Remembering that always adds a complication because if you have foreign taxes you're dealing with, then then you have to think about what's the tax treaty situation before, between the U.S. and and the other country who's paying the taxes and so on and so forth. Remember that that's an area of specialization that you as a tax preparer might take on or might decide consciously not to take on, remembering that you have to basically keep your clientele in a range that you can actually make money so you can have a business and help people by running it. So line four of schedule 8812 is more than zero. All right, part 2A, additional child tax credit for all filers. Tip, so if the amount on line 12 is more than line 14, you may be able to take the additional child tax credit. Complete form 1040, 1040SR, 1040NR through line 27. Also complete schedule three, line 11 before completing 2A, caution. So if you file form 2555, dealing with that foreign income again, you cannot claim the additional child tax credit. Bonafide residents of Puerto Rico. So if you were a bon bona fide resident of Puerto Rico, you may be able to claim this ACTC, additional child tax credit. So remember when we're talking about uh, different countries, then, then there's gonna be scenarios specific to those areas. And it depends on the, again the treaties that we have between uh, the the different the different countries. So that might be a place of specialization or a place that you don't feel comfortable with, depending on what you're what you're doing with. If you if you can get comfortable with those places and that's where you have cl tax clientele, that could be a differentiating factor to kind of you know pick up clients and be able to to do some good there. So AC, if you had at least one qualified child, so you can claim the ACTC additional child tax credit in part two of form 141040SS uh, US self-employment tax return, including the additional child uh, tax credit for bona fide residents of Puerto Rico instead of form 1040 or 1040SR and schedule 8812 if you aren't required to file form 1040 or 1040SR. To determine your ACTC additional child tax credit on Schedule 8812, complete Part 2A and 2B as follows. On line 18A, include your earned income and reported on Form 1040 or 1040 SR. Uh, don't include income earned in Puerto Rico, which you include from U.S. tax, which you exclude from U.S. tax as a bona fide resident of Puerto Rico on line 21. Include all your withheld Social Security, Medicare, and additional Medicare taxes, including those taxes withheld by Puerto Rican employers that are shown on Puerto Rico forms 499R2W2PR. Generally, you were a bona fide resident of Puerto Rico if during 2023 you met uh, the presence test did not have a tax home outside of Puerto Rico and did not have a closer connection to the United States or to a foreign country than you have to Puerto Rico. So for more information on bona fide resident status, you can see publication 570. Line 15, check this box if you do not want to claim the additional child tax credit. If you check this box, skip parts uh, 2A and 2B uh, and enter zero on line 27, line 18A. If you have net earnings from self-employment and you use either optional method to figure those net earnings, use the earned income worksheet later to figure the amount to enter on line 18A. Otherwise, 
all other taxpayers can use the earned income chart later to figure the amount to enter on line 18A, 18B, enter on line 18B the total amount of non-taxable combat pay that you and your spouse, if filing jointly, received in 2023. So that combat pay can, can be a little bit difficult sometimes, which could be good because sometimes you get benefits with regards to the combat pay as to whether you want to include it uh, in income or not, uh, which can be confusing because sometimes you might want to include something in income and have your income actually go up, which is usually bad for taxes, but possibly good in certain situations, such as sometimes some refundable credits, most notably, I think, with regards to the earned income credit, uh, which we'll talk about later. So this amount will be reported either on line 1I of Form 1040 or 1040SR, or should be shown in Form W-2 Box 12 with code Q. Part 2B, certain filers who have three or more qualifying children and bona fide residents of Puerto Rico. Line 21, if you are completing Part 2B and your employer withheld or you paid additional Medicare tax or Tier 1 PRTA tax, use the additional Medicare tax and uh, RRTA tax worksheet later to figure the amount to enter on Line 21. So here's basically the worksheet. Uh, credit limit worksheet A. I won't go through these in detail in future presentations. However, we'll get into a tax software worksheet so we can see how the data input might be applied into the tax software. The tax software obviously helping us with some of these calculations. And then we can kind of deconstruct what is happening going to the end forms and basically saying why are the forms being populated so we can double check data input into the tax software and run scenarios with it.